Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Amen. Praise God. It's a good, good night to die. Glory. What a glorious day to go home. But we got work to do. Amen. You know, one of the things that the Spirit shared with me while we were worshiping, and uh, in other words, I, I saw Jesus walking around, but he's not only walking around here, but everywhere. And he's touching people's shoulders. And he's touching their shoulders. And, he's, and, and I was like, why are, you why are you touching? I'm finding out who's faithful. Who's faithful? I'll know by the touch. I'll know by the touch. Whether they're faithful in heart, whether they're faithful in mind, whether they're faithful in desire, whether they're faithful. Faithful. He says, I'm looking for those that are faithful, truly faithful in everything. Not just according to certain things, not because you show up at work on time, none of that. It's about being faithful in character, in the character of who he is. Being faithful and making right choices. Being faithful, completing those things he's asked us to do in assignments. Faithful. Everyone say faithful. So, so all of these assignments and everything that's happening right now, there's something that we've got to be able to do. You know, one thing about, like, trees and so forth, especially palm trees. I don't know if you've ever seen a palm tree really bend during a storm, during hurricanes, but because they're rooted. You know, no matter what's happening, man, they just fling right back up again, no problem. <laughs> I mean, it's really difficult to knock them over, you know, unless a truck comes and hits it. But even still, the truck's going to be half gone. But in this, there's an area to where you and I must be flexible, bendable. In other words, be able to shift but never change. Does anybody understand that? We must be able to shift with the flow but not change by character. Shift whatever, everything that's going on. Go to 1 Corinthians 9. We must have the ability to shift without change. First Corinthians nine, verse nineteen. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. For though I am free from all men. Is there anybody there? Oh, okay. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a what? Jew. That I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law. That I might win those who are under the law. Now remember, Paul was no longer under the law. In fact, he kept exposing people to try and get him from being under the law and get him into Christ, right? But he said, you know what? So some of them, I just, I agreed with them. No problem. In other words, he fellowship with them. So did Jesus, amen? Remember, he hung around with drunkards, prostitutes everywhere. Why? Because he wanted to fellowship with them to give them an opportunity to be rescued. You know, so many people just won't shift. They won't shift. You know, there's things that you and I got to put up with to be able to rescue someone. Amen? In verse 21, to those who are without law is without law. Not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. That I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as what? Weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. In other words, Paul had the ability to shift without change of character. Amen? Does everybody understand that? Now this I do for the gospel's sake that I may be partaker of it with you. Do you not know that those who run in the race will run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. 
And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we do it for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I do what? I discipline my body. In other words, I take dominion over anything that my body would try to interfere with what I'm supposed to do. But I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become what? Disqualified. Again, Paul had the ability to shift without changing of character, integrity, faith, joy, peace, and righteousness. He didn't change. He was able to be able to minister to anyone. Amen? And so you and I must be able to minister to anyone at any time without change of character. That doesn't mean you're going to go laugh at dirty jokes. I ain't changing that. Now, people might be around some. There's many times I don't, when I go to places, many times I'm quiet. That might be hard to understand, but my, my wife will even say sometimes, you're quiet. <laughs> but I'm quiet sometimes because I want to know what I'm supposed to do. And until the Spirit says, share something, because usually in the room of conversation, something's coming up. And, you know, God's always going to unction something to happen so that we can rescue. Listen, when I, 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 I'll go hang out with bikers, I'll, I don't care what it is. I'll become whatever it takes, but not change character. And so you and I must be able to also, whether it's a job. Listen, everybody goes through stuff. Amen? So think, look at. There's not one person in here that hasn't been disappointed in something, especially in ourselves. Amen? How many times have you said, man, I know better than that, you know? <laughs> but in that, even though we've come across things that have disappointed, offended, rejected, all kind, we don't change character. We just don't change character. Amen? We don't get out of divine order. Never. Why? It opens the door. People that get out of divine order get out of divine character. And God can't trust them. I don't care who you're ministering to all day. I don't care how many discipleships, uh, uh, this uh, penetrating prayer book lets you hand out all day. If you are out of character, it doesn't count. You won't be accounted for. Amen? Is everybody okay? James 1. It's not like we haven't heard this before. But let me tell you, right now you got to be careful. Because there is kind of like a civil war between those who wear a mask and those who don't. Those who've been vaccinated and those who aren't. Amen? Even though you might want to pull that mask and slap them in the face, you can't. Even though you want to say something that, you know, whatever, you got to maintain character. Amen, no matter what. And there are going to be places where you're going to have to put a mask on to get in to testify. Does everybody understand that? But I ain't wearing one for jury duty. Hallelujah. Anyways, James 1, verse 2. Let's go. Everybody there? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various what? Challenges. Various challenges. What's this for? Knowing that the what? Testing of your faith. Testing of your connection of faith and trust in the promises of God. <laughs> Hello? Produces what? Patience or what that's called? Endurance. There's not enough endurance. But let patience or this endurance have its what? Perfect work. That you may be what? Perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. That's God's desire. Amen? So you and I are going to go through various challenges. It's going to test our connection of faith, trust, and promises of God through the endurance against attacks, temptations, emotional desires to bring us to a perfect and complete position in the Spirit. To bring us to a where? Perfect and complete position in the Spirit. And what's going to assist us is 
wisdom. It's with great wisdom of renewing. Everyone say renewing. Man, I can't get rid of that right now. For some reason, the Lord keeps telling me, my people do not know how to get renewed. They lack renewing. You know how many people are missing here tonight that should be renewing? It's incredible. And then they wonder why things don't go right with them. They wonder why they make stupid decisions. They wonder why they have struggles in their home and everything else. Why? Because they're not renewed. Is everybody okay? Anybody okay? Dear God. Hallelujah. Verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask him what? And what? Faith. It says if you ask, then you what? Receive, because you ask in faith. Let him ask in faith without what? Doubting. Oh, that's the enemy's voice. Mr. Doubter. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the what? Wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. Now let me ask you this. If there's doubt and, he's, and the individual's tossed to and fro and unstable, can God trust them? No. If they're led by emotional desires, can God trust them? No. If they can't shift, but easily changed. Can God trust them? No. He says he's a double-minded person. Unstable in all their ways. Unstable. In other words, they're not consistent. You don't know what they're going to do. If we don't know what they're going to do, God can't trust them. Amen? Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. The lack of renew is lack of faith. And what it happens is that it produces double-mindedness, instability, and they're tossed about by emotional voice of the stranger. The emotional voice of the stranger. Colossians 2. You know, Jesus was able to communicate even with the tax collectors, the fishermen, everyone, you know, uh, the carpenters. He was able to shift with all of them, but he didn't change. Even when he was persecuted, he didn't change. Even when he was beaten and spit on, he didn't change. Nothing changed him. Nothing. He stood fast, maintaining the character. And you short people with a check, and let me say, people change. People will change over a lack of a buck in their, if they're short of a dollar in their check because they're money hungry. I mean, telling God is exposing every little thing possible. Every little thing. Even when we get sick, don't change. Endure, fight. Don't be a wimp. Amen? Everybody gets tested in everything we do. It's all recorded. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 4. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in what? Spirit. Rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abiding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. That's one of the enemy's ploys. He always wants to bring us into the basic principles back into the world instead of trusting Christ. Amen. People have a tendency to still run to the phone instead of the throne or to the doctor instead of the throne. Verse 9. For in him dwells all the what? Fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? You are complete in him 
who is the head of all principality and power. Again, shifting without changing to maintain good order, becoming wise of your enemy's tactics, influence, not compromising. In other words, you trust, you submit, and you fulfill the calling because you know that you're complete in him. Everything is being challenged right now. Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4. In verse 10. Ability to shift without change. Hallelujah. Anybody uh, ever been rejected? <laughs> Anybody ever lie to you? What did you do? <laughs> How did you respond or did you react? Did you ever want vengeance on someone? Don't answer that. I mean, I'm just, everybody's run into that. You know, I was just saying. These are the ways of the world, though. Amen? But we know that vengeance is of the Lord. See, we must be able to shift without changing. No matter what. Hallelujah. Verse 10, please. Philippians 4, verse 10. Let's speak it. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in at whatever state I am to be what? Content. He was able to shift. I know how to be what? Abased. And I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Wow. <laughs> all things through Christ who strengthens me. Shifting without changing. <laughs> I mean, con again, constant, non-changing ability to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You know, so many, so many times people forget to say that when they're being influenced. You know what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, they're not battling with the word. They're battling with their emotion, and they lose every time. You cannot win with your emotion. You can't win with your feelings. You'll lose. You can't win with your thoughts. Your tongue is a sword. Amen? We must speak the word to overcome. And what you speak is what you eat. Amen? Hallelujah. Hebrews 10. Did you ever try, try, and try, and try, and try, and do something that just didn't work out? You know what you're supposed to do? Stop. Cut it out. Wait, that means God ain't approving nothing yet. It ain't God's time. I don't care how many applications you go out. I don't care how many things you do. It ain't God's time if it ain't happening yet. Does everybody get it? It's just not God's time. He's got something better. You know, right now, everything that the Lord is doing, he's putting his body under the shadow. He's holding everybody under. Until he's going to let out in his time. Not our time. Um, and so what happens when you don't get all of these things? When things don't go your way? What are you doing? Hello. React and responding. Give, finally give up and trust God. Surrender it. Okay, it's not God's time. Then the Lord knows. You know, I've always had to. I've always realized that something's going to come. Something's going to come in the most unexpected way. 
You never know how. No. You just don't know. But something always comes. Because he always makes a way. But you must confess. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, I trust you. But see, when you trust him, when you say that, he's, you're going to get tested. You're my fulfillment. When you say that, you're going to get tested. Everything is about a test. Why? Because the enemy will challenge you in everything you say. What's he trying to do? Bring doubt, disappointment, discouragement, and cause a change of character. Amen? Glory. Hebrews 10, 19. Everybody there? Uh -huh. Praise God. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart <clears throat> in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without what? What? What's that word? Wavering. That means if a person wavers, do they change? Yes. And the enemy knows it. A slight compromise of change, hook in the jaw. He doesn't pull it yet. He waits because he knows if you did it with that one, another one's coming. Another one's coming. Another one's coming. Another one's coming. Eventually, you get enough hooks in the jaw, then he pulls it. It makes you look like a real bonehead. Hallelujah. Let us, hold, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises what? Faithful. Faithful to what? Answer. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the days approaching. you got to remember, one of the things the enemy is still trying to do is prevent people from assembling. Why? Because if he, if, when a person gets prevented from assembling, that means there's a hook in the jaw. If he can keep that person in that position, he knows he can compromise, 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 justify, 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 reason, reason, reason. Let me tell you, he's got a whole plan of flooding. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Without wavering and assembling. The ability to shift without change. Hebrews 13, why we're here. Hallelujah. Verse 5, let's speak it. Let your what? Conduct be without what? Covetousness. Why does covetousness change the character of Christ? Yeah. Be content. Be what? Be content. In other words, be don't be anxious. Amen. Be content with such things as you have. Be content. In other words, God's got a plan. Will you trust him and stop the stuff? For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That should be sufficient. <laughs> so we may boldly say, the Lord is my what? Helper. I will not what? Fear or be anxious. What can man do to me? If God be for me, who can be against me? <laughs> Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow. Considering the outcome of their conduct, Jesus Christ is what? The same yesterday, today, and forever. He ain't changing, and neither should you and I. Amen? We should have a conduct without covetousness. James 3. Verse 13, ability to shift without change.
James 3.13, let's speak it together. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good conduct. Is good conduct Christ's character? Yes. That is, that his works are done in the what? Meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and what? Self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make Peace, good conduct. Second Timothy 2. Glory, ability to shift without change. You know, it's like somebody was driving a vehicle and they have a standard car. They're able to shift without giving everybody whiplash. You know, it's smooth. They're able to shift without changing. Amen? But someone that can't shift, <laughs> they're changing everybody else. <laughs> Verse 20, 2 Timothy 2.20. But in a what? great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver but also of wood clay and some for honor and some for dishonor therefore if anyone cleanses himself from the latter latter conduct he'll be a vessel of honor sanctified and useful for the master prepared for every good work flee also youthful lust but pursue righteousness faith love peace with those who call on the lord out of a what pure heart but avoid Avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife and will change character. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him, to do his will. Avoid things that will alter and cause change to the righteous, faithful character of Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 verse 11. And Jesus himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a what? Perfect man, to the measure the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be what? Children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, in other words, changed, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Well, you see this continuously right now, big time. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body, for the edifying in itself in love. In other words, never stop learning. Never stop learning. Amen? There should be a thirst and hunger to want to always learn more about Christ and what's going on in the mysteries of God. Never stop learning, never stop seeking, never stop sowing, and never stop gathering. Amen? John 15. We 
In verse 1, John 15, verse 1, Never stop learning, seeking, sowing, and gathering. I mean, we can go on that list, trusting and so forth, you know. John 15, verse 1, let's speak it. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he what? He prunes, he squeezes. That a mere may bear what? More fruit. See, there isn't more fruit bearing without a squeeze. Amen? You can't take juice out of a fruit without doing what? Squeeze. Don't we sing that song? New wine? New power? Amen? You got to get squeezed. Verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in your mouth, amen, <laughs> you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Powerful. Abide, abide, and abide. Then abide. Amen. What do we abide in? His presence, his power, and his truth. It's called the anointing. 2 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 11. Oh, we love this scripture. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your affections, emotions. Now in return, for the same I speak to you as children, you also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? What part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement is the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them. I'll be their God and they'll be my people if they do something very important. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch those emotional, foolish things that are unclean. Amen. Then I will receive you, for I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Unclean emotional affections cause change of character. So many people are still making choices and decisions out of emotion. Then they tell you God said, told them to. No way. <laughs> God never interrupts himself. Amen. He's always a divine order daddy. Philippians 2. <clears throat> Philippians 2 verse 12. Again, we are in a time right now where we must, man, we got to have discernment, man, big time. We got to be able to discern what is accepted, acceptable to God, and not acceptable to God. What is his time and not his time? What is his voice and not his voice? Philippians 2, and verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. 
but all but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, many people are different before people compared to what they are behind closed doors. They change, but God knows. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining, disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Maintain the character in front and behind closed doors no matter what. Amen. First Peter chapter 1. That's what we call true colors. Hallelujah. Shift without change. Hey, one day you're a carpenter, the next day you're a mover. <laughs> you don't change. One day you're making money, the next day you're not. You don't change. Why? Because God's going to work everything to the good. If you let him. If you let him. The problem is that so many people don't let him. They start grumbling, complaining, and this and that, and whatever, and God just steps right back. And he just starts hooking, 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 hooking. Biting the bait of de the devil. The bait of Satan. And then things just take prolong, prolong, and prolong. And people wonder why ain't nothing ever going to happen. It's not going to. And then what some, usually what happens is a person goes out and makes it happen. Then they regret it down the road. Hallelujah. First Pete chapter 1. Unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. Amen. Verse 3. First Pete 1, 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. <clears throat> to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various challenges. That the genuineness of your faith, your connection, being much more precious than gold that perishes. In other words, things being, see, you're being tested in faith because it's more precious to God than all the materialism. Though it is tested by fire, it may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, you love, though now you do not see him. Yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Genuineness, you're following. The genuine following or followers that are able to shift, alter, wait, advance, do whatever it takes. But I'll change of character, amen, or integrity. No matter what comes, offense, sickness, rejection, betrayal, your plan didn't work out, you stay the same. Amen? Remember, Jesus never changed. Either should we. And I'm going to close at Psalm 15. Falsely accused, persecuted, don't change. Verse 1, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell on your holy hill. <clears throat> we love this song, or this psalm. He who walks what? Uprightly 
and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall what? Never change or be moved. Praise God. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, I ask that you keep us and put us in a position that we are able to shift with never changing your character or compromising so that your name would be glorified and the world may see you and not us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise be to God. Stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>